In the headlines, police in Katsina ban local, local vigilante called Yen Sakai. National Association of Nigerian Students vows to respond to ASU four-week strike. Police arrest Abakari as travails of suspended supercorp continues. On the foreign news, Trudeau invokes emergency powers in response to trucker protests. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Ayubay Lea. Thank you for joining. Katsita State Government has banned the activities of Yen Sake, a volunteer group across the state. The Special Advisor to the Katsina State Governor on Security Matters, Ibrahim Ahmed Katsina, announced the ban in a statement on Monday. He said the state government will only recognize the activities of the vigilante group, which is under the supervision, control and monitoring of the police, other security agencies and the traditional institutions. In Sake in Katsina and other states battling banditry has been severely accused of feeling insecurity through extrajudicial killings, sometimes involving innocent citizens. Now, at least 8,000 boys and girls have been recruited by Boko Haram United Nations Children's Fund is calling on government to sign handover protocol for children encountered in the cause of armed conflict in Nigeria and Lake Chad Basin region. The international organization made the call when marking the International Day Against Child Soldiers in Meduguri. The report. At the peak of insurgency in Borno State, more than 8,000 boys and girls were recruited by armed groups for different roles. The conflict era impacted negatively on the psychological well-being and denying them access to education as well as violating their rights. For the International Day Against the Use of Child Soldiers by Non-State Armed Groups, UNICEF is calling on stakeholders to negotiate the release and reintegration of children back to the society and most especially prevent the recruitment of child soldiers. But the reality today is that many girls and boys are still in custody. Many are also abducted and used as soldiers, armors, spies, cooks, and farmhands. Many girls have been forcibly married by their abductors, beaten, raped, and violated in ways unimaginable. Stakeholders at the event commended the organization for recognizing the day and pledged to continue the support of rehabilitating and sponsoring basic knowledge, skills, and education of released child soldiers in the state. We call them the standard operation uh, guidelines. We take as we reintegrate them. They are not just released into the communities. We bring the community's major stakeholders to participate in the process. And before these children are reintegrated, they undergo through series of MPHSS and other supports. I mentioned religion, I mentioned psychological, uh, even psychiatric. We have Child soldiery has so many causes and unless and until we identify such causes we will continue to have such problems of child soldier. One of these problems of child soldier is poverty, neglect, revenge and the conflict itself. The message to armed groups and state actors is to understand that the right tools for children are pens, papers, watercolors, and not guns and bombs. The National Association of Nigerian Students has knocked the federal government and the academic staff union of universities over their inability to reach an agreement which has resulted in industrial action by ASU. Nance, in a statement on Monday by its president, Asef on Sunday Adedayo, threatened to embark on a nationwide protest to force lecturers back to class. The Nance president blamed both the government and ASU for the industrial action, saying that the student body expected 
both parties to reach a compromise and do all that was required to avert the strike. He said the government and ASU by this action sent a direct message to Nigerian students to also take position comfortable for its side to, of the table irrespective of the implications. He added that Danan's collective response to the strike action will be made known at its Congress scheduled for February 17th. Self-confessed kidnapper and suspected killer of five-year-old Hanifa Abubakar Abdul Malik Tanko has pleaded not guilty to four count out of five count charges read to him by a Kano State High Court presided over by Justice Usman Naaba. Tanko and his co-accused, however, admitted to conspiracy to commit a kidnap and denying kidnapping itself and the subsequent murder of Hanifa Abubakar. Presiding Judge Justice Usman Naaba adjourned the case for hearing and presentation of witness to 2nd and 3rd of March this year. Prosecution Counsel and Attorney General of Kano State, Lawan Musa, says that the prosecution will present all their witnesses before the court to prove the, of the offense against the defendants. Counsel for the third defendant, Labaran Usman, says that he is ready to defend Abdul Malik. Tanko. It is conspiracy uh, to commit uh, a kidnapping, which uh, two of them admitted that is Abdul Malik and Hashimu. Fatima, of course, denied all the charges. Of course, as the law stipulates, uh, the next thing is uh, for us to bring in our witnesses. Uh, of course, uh, the court also agreed with us and uh, adjourned the matter to the uh, to much uh, gave us uh, two clear days that is the I think first and second second, second and third uh, day of March for us to bring all our witnesses we marshaled our points by priority lawyers that would defend the three defendants in this case and the charges or the charges or count charge read them they've answered it some they were, were some were denied so we are prepared to go into hearing on the 2nd to 3rd of March. Okay. Uh, there are about five, five count charge. How many has he pleaded guilty? Um, they plead, they acknowledge the first count, why they denied the rest. There are over 20, only a few came today because of other courts. From, so the, from, 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 legal from the legal aid council yes. and other pro bono lawyers. Yes. yes, the first count charge that was admitted was conspiracy to commit the offense, which they admitted. Why the rest were denied? Meanwhile, Chief Judge of Zamfara State Justice Kulu Aliyu has inaugurated a seven-member investigative panel to investigate the allegations of gross misconduct, financial fraud and abuse of office against the state's Deputy Governor Mahadi Gusau. Justice Kulu, after the inauguration of this seven-member panel, however, did not give a time frame to the panel within which they are expected to complete the assignment and submit their report. As part of the impeachment proceedings against the Zamfara State Deputy Governor Mahadi Gusau, the Chief Judge of the State, Justice Kulu Aliyu, has inaugurated seven member investigative panel. Eighteen members of the Zamfara State House of Assembly had, during the extraordinary plenary session last Thursday, the 10th of February 2022, unanimously resolved to direct the Chief Judge of the State, Justice Kulu Aliyu, to constitute investigative panel against the Deputy Governor Mahadi Gusau. The assignment of the panel is to investigate the allegations of gross misconduct, financial fraud, abuse of office and breach of the constitution against the state's deputy governor. The chief judge, Justice Kulu Aliu, said she received a letter of request from the Speaker of the State Assembly dated 10 February 2022 to constitute a panel to investigate the allegation against the deputy governor. According to her, the use of word shall in section 188 imposes a duty on me as the Honorable Chief Judge of Zamfara State to appoint a panel of seven persons who are of unquestionable character, integrity, and honesty to investigate the allegation of the Deputy Governor. Within seven days of the passing of a motion under the foregoing provisions of this section, the Chief Judge of the State shall, at the request of the Speaker of the House of Assembly, appoint a panel of seven persons who, in his opinion, are of unquestionable integrity, 
not being members of any public service, legislative houses, or political party to investigate the allegation as provided in this section. Based on the above constitutional provisions, I received a letter of request from Right Honorable Speaker and Forest State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Nasul Mahazo Magaria, with reference number ZAMH slash SPK slash G slash 2022 slash 002, dated 10th February 2022, to constitute a panel to investigate the allegations against the Deputy Governor of the Forest State, His Excellency Barrister Mahade Ali Muhammad Gusau, passed one to the resolution passed by the Forest State House of Assembly in each sitting. Chairman of the seven-member investigative panel, retired Justice Tan Kusuba, promised to carry out the assignment in accordance with the Constitution and will give the embattled Deputy Governor of Zamfara State fair hearing. In law, there must to be fair hearing that that is all parties must to be hard. <clears throat> In this, in this light, the law and procedure of Zampara State High Court are to, to guide both the court and the learned counsel for both parties. Justice Kuro Aliyu charged the panel to work as a team and concentrate on the issues contained in the notice of allegation against the deputy governor. There is no terms of reference and time frame given to the seven member panel. Then, so far as state lawmakers are bent on impeaching the state deputy governor, Mahdi Gusau, despite the court order restraining them from taking any action against the embattled number two citizens. Now, suspended head of intelligence response team, DCP Abba Kari, has been arrested by the police. Reports say that police arrested DCP Kari alongside four others on Monday. The police arrested him hours after the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency declared him wanted over alleged drug links. The suspended DCP is also under investigation after the Federal Bureau of Investigation of the United States of America indicted him in the case of fraud involving Instagram celebrity Ramon Abbas, also known as Hush Puppy. Now, travails of Abakari did not start now. In this news commentary, Daily Trust Deputy Editor-in-Chief Abdulaziz Abdulaziz chronicles his high and low moments. At a point in his career, he was seen by many as a Nigerian version of the American super cop Elliot Ness, an incorruptible crime buster and a mission to weed out criminal elements from the society. However, unlike many dutiful men of the security services who barely get heard for what they do, Carrie was heard and lavishly seen. This, for cynics, was the first alarm. Kerry began his ascent to limelight with his appointment as the officer in charge of the defunct Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS, Lagos State, in January 2011. He went on to carve a niche for himself by busting syndicates of criminals, armed robbers, kidnappers, and internet fraudsters, amongst others. He joined the Nigerian police force as a cadet assistant, superintendent of police, in 2000 and served at different times at Song, Giri, and Noman local government areas and made local news for his arrest of a notorious armed robber called Ndagi, also known as Spirit. He recorded headline grabbing milestones including the arrest of kidnapping King Pins Evans in Lagos and Wadume in Taraba and led the rescue of a relative of President Muhammad Buhari from a kidnapper's den in Kano. For years, the senior police officer operated not only as a super cop with the proverbial magic wand for unraveling crime, but also a celebrity cop with his life and tasks, including sensitive missions, blogged on Instagram and other social media platforms. It was, however, heartbreaking for many of his fans when, in August last year, Details of his close relation with celebrity internet fraudster 
Ramon Olorunwa Abbas, alias Hush Puppy, were made public. The United States Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, which released the details as part of its probe into a $1.1 million fraud committed by the conman, indicted Kerry as a partner in the fraud. As sensational as it was, the U.S. government's 2021 indictment of the Super Cup was not the first time he will be accused of compromise, nor is it likely to be the last, going by the most recent scandal which broke out involving him. In the past, Kerry and his team were accused of human rights abuses, molesting suspects and converting confiscated property. The Super Cup, who initially denied any link with Hush Puppy when the solid details of their relationship began resurfacing, kept changing the story by editing the Facebook post 12 times. Kerry was subsequently suspended from service and a pro panel instituted to investigate him. But, six months later, the police authorities are yet to take a stand on the issue, with many commentators suspecting a cover-up grander than the usual esprit de corps, with unresolved allegations of gross misconduct pending against him. The latest accusation, coming from no less than the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, linking him with drug cartels, has sealed Kerry's reputation as an expert in running with the hare and hunting with the hounds you're watching trust news update after the break price of cooking gas cripples gas plants join us again for more details <music> Thanks for staying. You're watching Trust News Update. And let's have another look at some of the top stories again. Kaduna, Katsina State Government has banned the activities of Yen Sake, a volunteer group across the state, following allegations against the group of feeling insecurity in the state. Plus, National Association of Nigerian Students has knocked the federal government and the academic staff union of universities over their inability to reach an agreement which has resulted in industrial action by ASU. In other news, Nigeria has been fingered as source of infection after a patient in Bedfordshire, the United Kingdom, died of Lassa fever. The UK Health Security Agency announced on Monday that the unidentified individual was the third member of a family that recently returned from West Africa to become infected with the virus. According to a report published by Daily Mail UK Online, only 11 cases of the rodent-borne disease have, been, have ever been detected in the UK. The three infections identified in the east of England in the last three days are the first spotted since 2009. The online publication reports that the UK Health Security Agency is conducting a robust contact tracing exercise to reach everyone who had close contact with those infected. The Ministry of Health Monday signed a memorandum of understanding with the private sector and other stakeholders for the operationalization of the National Emergency Medical Service and Ambulance System. The Minister of Health, Osagi Ehanire, said NEMSA's 
will help Nigerians access care during emergencies at no cost. Dr. Saidu Ahmed Dumbuwal, National Program Manager, said that the MOU was signed with the FRSC, the National Health Insurance Scheme, the Association of Private Medical Practitioners of Nigeria, the Guild of Medical Directors and the Federal Capital Territory Administration. The World Health Organization Nigeria Country Representative Walter Molumbo expressed hope that the signing of the MOU will form a solid foundation for a functional emergency system for effective service delivery at federal and state levels. River State Primary Health Care Management Board says it has doubled its effort in continuation of her commitment to take COVID vaccinations closer to the people and bridge the gap of low vaccination records of COVID-19 vaccine uptake in the state. The board says the move will address some of the gaps in knowledge and concerns on COVID-19 vaccines. The report. While residents join the world in celebrating Valentine's Day, River State Primary Health Care Management Board takes its sensitizations and free COVID-19 vaccination campaign to Rumo Dumaya Market, popularly called Rumo Koro Market. The board, in partnership with Rivers Media for Health, took the advocacy for the uptake of COVID-19 vaccine is busy mobilizing traders who turned up in their numbers to take the jab. Speaking to newsmen shortly after taking the vaccine, some of the traders say that due to tales they have read on social media on the alleged negative effects of the vaccine, they were afraid to take the vaccine initially, but have been motivated to do so after a better explanation on the efficacy of the vaccine to save lives. This is my first dose. But before now, uh, I was like having double mind about the vaccine. But I made up my mind because I have seen that the vaccine is highly important to us as uh, citizens of Nigeria. And at the same time, we need to take our vaccine so that we can be able to have our things done normal and also obey the rules and regulations of the country and also have our health and be safe in all ramifications of life and at the same time so that we can be able to do things with our fellow neighbors, friends, relatives who have taken and be to also save their life also. Yes, I just take the Now, some marketers of liquefied petroleum gas LPG in Gombe State said hike in prices of cooking gas is severely affecting their business amidst low turnout of customers. A kilogram of LPG in Gombe sells at 650 naira, a slight reduction from 800 per kg sold in the past. Ibrahim Ismail reports that some sellers in Gombe lost customers who cannot afford to buy cooking gas because of the hike. Although the price of liquefied petroleum gas LPG has dropped from prices ranging between 800 to 715 naira to 650 naira per kilogram, some Nigerians are still not satisfied with the slight decrease. Trust TV's visit to one of the largest gas plants in Gombe show low turnout of customers and plant operators say their business has been affected by the hike in price of the LPG. Our customers have reduced, so people say they can't really afford to pay for gas. They better go for the normal local way of cooking. So we are suggesting that if the, the price rate can reduce, and the price rate right now, for now we are having the price rate of about 664 per kg. Then it's about 780, about 800, 804, and it was not a good thing for us as, as a company because we had a lot, we had to lose some of our customers on this issue of gas price so this year when the gas got down we got some customers started coming back who are asking more so do you think if we can get more of reduction of price i think we'll go higher and people will enjoy our services some customers share different opinion on the little decrease in price of lpg in Gwambe. the situation we found ourselves regarding the price of gas the thing is getting high due to some reasons. We don't know where the problem lies from. But now the things are coming down compared to the compared to previous prices. My hope is the thing to come down from the past that is going to be sell. 
that we are that they are selling it, let the, the thing come down again. That is our uh, hope. Now, so I'm feeling gas, Anna. I'm a day for us, and I'm a bumper that's a tea. Ugo discover about a buyer. I refill the gas cylinder here, but there is a variation in the price compared with what was obtainable three weeks ago because we used to buy a kg at 715 era. Now it is 650. We are happy with the price decrease, but we expect it to be more cheaper. Come on, I take it. The Richard and Cinema, I'm a day. I can buy the bubble. However, the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority said the LPG price will drastically reduce in coming months. It's all a matter of supply, demand and supply. But I know that the government is making frantic effort to make sure that gas is made available for Nigerians at a reasonable price. Because the supply base is what is causing all this. If there's any of the petroleum products if there is scarcity, then you can negotiate the price. Between October 2021 to December 2021, Nigerians have tested the bitterness of hike in price of LPG across the country from Gombe. Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. And that wraps up Trust News Update. Do well to connect with us via our social media platforms and also Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch us live. I am Ayubaila. Thank you for watching.